even faith healing and prayer and that you can make a plant or an animal better, all of us do. Well, if this works, then so does psychic affliction. You cannot have one side of the yin without the yang. There are two surfaces to the coin. It's an actuality, but people in the quote new age very, very seldom want to look at that particular aspect of actuality. Yes, it can happen, it has. Uh, yes, and that's the topic of another long dissertation, but I want to turn it back to the experts here. So thank you for the... Thank you, Bob. So he's always good for some great insights. There's a few uh, things I wanted to point out about this antenna here. Um, uh, I just got a letter from Trevor Constable regarding the multi-wave oscillator when we began looking into this, and he, he told me he regarded the multi-wave oscillator as a false path, that he felt that whatever healing effect was being produced by the apparatus was the uh, uh, healing ethers, or the formative ethers of Steinerian physics, said they were marshalling to suppress the electromagnetic activity, because you know, he says life hates electricity. So that was just one opinion I thought I'd bring in because I have a high regard for Trevor's work. So, but looking into Trevor's work, if you saw Bob's talk on the uh, history of radionics, he showed some of uh, Trevor's cloud busters, which he moves in his vehicles. They're no longer tied into uh, groundwater or anything. And basically, he's dealing with log periodic geometric shapes. And he's uh, scientifically demonstrated that you can manipulate the ethers with these geometric shapes. And that's basically what we're working with with this antenna. And we've submitted a pair of these antennas to Trevor for use in his primary en uh, energy engineering experiments. And we should be publishing results on that also. And as Eric said, with the log periodic antenna, it keeps on putting out a virtual antenna it goes on. So there's actually more rings happening here. That's a basic pattern of life. Life just keeps on going and growing. You know, it's very tenacious. You know, if there's one little bit where life can go, it fills the space. And uh, that's why we feel these antennas will be good. Basically, if I would recommend for any use, it would be to grow sprouts or something like that. You know, like what Bob was talking about with health. You know, most diseases a death wish. And you know, the only way you're going to get healthy is if you go out there and you eat real food and you keep your body working, you know, that's about it. You don't have to go to a doctor to figure that out. You just stay healthy. And, uh, but we feel that, you know, th these will have applications in agriculture. And uh, also we found that they're also good for cleaning vibrations out of the rooms. I took over Borderland Sciences from Riley Crabb. You know, he spent the last 25, 30 years just hanging out seances, and there was incredible astral crap, we'll call it, just embedded deeply into the walls there. And we did uh, a lot of banishing rituals, you know, smudging things and stuff, and we got a lot of residue out, but it was still there. People come in, get headaches after a week. And once in t we tried for about six months or more, and once until we hung up a pair of these antennas that the room really cleared out, and uh, people really noticed a difference. It made it more vibrant. But basically, we've just got a few minutes left, so I'd like to field questions here. Yes? Can you differentiate between what's going on here and a negative ion generator and also a common or not negative ion generator that would be beneficial? I use the, the negative ion generator, not these. And initially, I feel good, and then over a period of time, my head gets really stuffy and I end up feeling sick. I was wondering, you know, Sure. I was sort of the daddy of the modern generation of negative ion generators. The first ones were made by a West Tech Electric Heater Company in San Francisco that used a hot body as the uh, ion generator. We found about 1957 to 58 that a brush discharge from a point source would generate considerably more cleaner, better ions. The U.S. Radium Corporation brought out a device using a radioactive source in a 700 volt field. The uh, largest selling ionizer in the USA today uh, was 70,000 copies through JSNA, and I owned the design of that, and they never paid me any royalties, so I can speak from a <laughs> uh, the negative ions. If they're in a balance of about five parts of negative to three to four positive, are highly beneficial. They also have the effect of charging the small particles in the atmosphere with like, L-I-K-E, sign, S-I-G-N. They will then repel, go stick on the wall, stick on the floor, make your walls dirty. 
they work for about 30% of the population. The possible side effects are the generation of ozone, O3, which will oxidize lung tissue and is fairly toxic in more than six parts per million, or billion. Million. I had something to add to that. Um, we only got about three minutes left here, but since we're talking about the negative ions, I just uh, ran into a person out in California who's done extensive research into ozone and its effects, and we'll be publishing this in an upcoming journal, hopefully the next one if I get the article on time, and he's found there's two types of ozone, what he calls cold plasma ozone and uh, you know, hot spark ozone. And he's found the cold plasma ozone to be very beneficial. You know, he had a dog that got in a fight and his jaw was torn open and all filled with pus. And he treated the dog for three days with his cold ozone generator, and uh, it killed all the infections. And, and uh, there are clinics injecting O3 into tumors with good results, uh, aspirating blood with O3, with autotransfusions, with excellent results in AIDS, for example. Kill, uh, many bacteria are anaerobic. Uh, the answer to your question is that the uh, ion machines will change the serotonin level of the brain. This has been established in many clinical tests. You can overdo it. You'll get leg cramps, you'll get all sorts of things if you're too close to one of these for too long a time. So use them uh, rather sparingly. If you're one of the 30% of the gross population who's sensitive to this, they're a godsend. If you have allergies, even if the ions don't work on you personally, the electrostatic charges will knock the solid particulate matter out of the air and you're breathing a cleaner uh, environment. And I see we're just about out of time. Are there any? I, I yes, sir. Well, maybe Ed Skilling is right. You might be able to do it without the rings because you have an FM antenna putting out energy here down to the giga, giga, gigahertz. Maybe it is scalar where if you shock excite the atmosphere, you have a number of components which are not well explained in the Maxwell equations. Uh, we were purists, went to concentric ring antennas because we were using the model of the heterodynes creating enough white noise up in the gigahertz range to somehow affect living systems, whether it was simply being picked up by these little hairs, <coughs> which are antenna on your body, or whether they were penetrating below the skin. And We believe so. We believe the pulse repetition rates are part of it. We were hitting it with a sledgehammer, and in there somewhere were the magic numbers. And had we had unlimited funds and time, we would have gone after it. By the way, I've never been funded. I have never charged anyone a nickel for this. People were bringing sick animals into my, ringing my doorbell at midnight, and they would have this little kitten that would have to be put to sleep, and I'd get out of bed and treat it, and they'd sometimes write, the cat's okay now. So it was a real headache. <laughs> and I suggest, go thy way and tell no man is still good advice. <laughs> we have a lot more to say, but there's only a minute left. We're going to be carrying all our current research is in the Journal of Borderland Research. We're going to keep current on this, and if we're wrong, we'll correct ourselves as we go, and we're open to any and all input on this. And just one final thing I want to say, Peter Kelly brought a scalar field detector by, and he couldn't, brought by one way, he couldn't measure it. He turned the instrument sideways, and he could actually pick up a field coming off of this. So that was an interesting experiment we just did a little over an hour ago. So thank you, and we're always around if anybody has any questions later.